I'm going to build a moon base out of junk. Well, I've been looking for things in the backyard, but it turns out it's kind of hard to find things that will actually work in space. Hey, grasshopper, wanna help me? I'm on my own. I've never built anything in space before, but I do know the moon doesn't have air. Zero. Well, almost zero. I'm not sure what this number means. So whatever junk I build it out of, it has to be airtight. But I can't build it out of wood like this building I built because the moon has very sharp space dust that would destroy it. But I do have something left over from a previous video. Bulletproof glass. If it can stop a bullet, it can stop some space dust. But that's not all this moon base has to be capable of. It must have its own power source and support life. This bulletproof glass can handle the extreme temperatures of space, but I don't have enough to finish the top and bottom. So... I have to make something. Little did I know, I would actually be inventing something new. Space wood. Patent pending. Actually, I don't know how to file a patent, so I'll just tell you how to make it. Start with some wood. I'm using two layers of plywood screwed together. Because its fibers are layered in opposite directions and glued together, it's one of the strongest wood materials you can use. But because the vacuum of space would suck out all the moisture from the wood and destroy it, we have to protect it. To protect it, pour some space grade epoxy into a giant mold to cover the plywood. Most epoxies will work, but some are stronger than others. Wait for it to harden and then sand it because mine turned out lumpy. Bubbles. I don't know how it looks on camera, but for me, I can see some shine happening. Wow. This epoxy can handle up to 8,000 PSI of pressure, way more than enough to handle the vacuum of space. Nothing. Now that we have a top and bottom, we can start turning this into a moon base. Earlier, we talked about making this moon base airtight. In order to do that, we're gonna be using silicone and it's like army silicone tape. The army silicone tape says it can handle up to 500 degrees. Wood's burning. And here's the tape. Well, considering this is way hotter than 500 degrees, I'm gonna say it passed. Let's put this moon base together. I literally have it held up with a light stand. The base of this thing is held up with straps attached to a generator. I told you we were building this out of junk. The silicone army tape will be going in between the walls of our moon base. Each of these bulletproof panels weighs about 100 pounds. Because the silicone grips so hard, these walls don't really move at all. This silicone caulking is our second air seal. Man, I have a nice caulk. I also had to mix up some more epoxy to brush it on the inside corners. It ain't pretty, but it'll do. Don't worry, we'll make it look good later. It's time to close this moon base and test it. The atmospheric pressure of Earth is about 14.7 PSI. The moon has zero. That means this box has to contain 14.7 PSI with zero atmospheric pressure pressing against it to support life. Kind of like an airplane's cabin pressure. So if this moon base can hold over 20 PSI of pressure on Earth, we pass the first test. Okay, this might be kind of gross, but listen. It holds there. So I was gonna use these ratchet straps to hold this whole thing together, so that way it didn't leak, but it leaked. And because it leaked, we have to cut it open again. There we go. Clean everything off and reseal it. That way we can test it with more ratchet straps. Each one of these straps can hold over 3,000 pounds each, and I have six of them. And because these straps are made out of polyester, they're extremely resistant to cold, 
heat and UV radiation. All right, it's time to test it again. See the gap? It busted open right there. This is gonna be a long project. I think I know what happened. These vertical straps hold the top and bottom together, but there's nothing to hold this from pushing out. Guess I have to buy something else. This video is getting expensive. Every time it leaks, you have to cut it open again. This isn't even the right tool. It's for drywall. You might be wondering why I'm wearing this. That's because it usually stinks inside. Remember that grasshopper from earlier? They have an exoskeleton. You've helped enough. Get out of here. We're building an exoskeleton. And these are the parts. I made him mad. Brought the whole family. Brought the whole colony. Literally everywhere. But before we build this exoskeleton, we have one more problem. Our moon base at 20 PSI. Crap, I just wrote on this with Sharpie. We'll have to withstand 228,000 pounds of internal pressure. In a box made out of junk. The measurement of internal pressure is pounds per inch. The more inches we have inside our moon base, the more pounds of internal force it must withstand. So if we're going to succeed at building this out of junk, we have to make it smaller. Time to take it apart again. I think this weighs like 400 pounds. Why didn't I just build it smaller the first time? The bulletproof glass kind of smells when you cut it. Why does everything stink on this project? Well, now that we have the correct dimensions of our moon base, we can start building the exoskeleton. Finally. The exoskeleton that's going to be protecting our moon base is going to be made out of a pretty common material, extruded aluminum. The cool thing about this material is you can pretty much buy it anywhere and you can use basic tools. I went through a few different designs on this one, even going so far as to design an exoskeleton in the computer. Although you can measure everything on the computer, you still have to go out into the real world and check the measurements yourself. Because sometimes engineers have no idea what they're doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I was a bit off on this one. Don't mind me, just playing with my nuts. do that too, right? When you're putting these together, you have to make sure that the, the little nut inside twists as you turn it. And that's why I play with my nuts. I ran out of the silver nuts, so I had to use black nuts. There's nothing wrong with the black nuts, kids. This exoskeleton should help us contain the over 12,000 pounds of air needed to support life. I now know that because I did the math using Euler Bernoulli's beam theory. Stick with me here. I didn't even graduate high school and I figured this out. There's only four numbers you need to know. The length of the beam, which is eight inches. I definitely know what eight inches looks like. Second, the applied load, which is the total weight of air the exoskeleton must support divided by the number of beams, which is 346.67 pounds or how much my mom weighs. It's okay, I don't know. <laughs> Third, the modulus of elasticity. How stretchy the beam is. Like this rubber band, pretty stretchy. Wouldn't wanna make a beam out of it. Ow! That actually hurt. That number's provided by whoever made the beam. Fourth, the cross-sectional moment of inertia. That's a fancy word. Or how easy it is to bend the beam based on its cross-sectional design. You wouldn't want to make a beam out of pencils. But now I have two pencils. Put all four of those numbers into the equation and you get the answer to how much it bends. Which in this case is basically nothing. But I'm not taking any chances. Hopefully I can still weld steel.
Not bad. Not good though either. If you use oil on your drill bits, they last longer. And if you're drilling steel like this, drilling slowly will help you not break the bit. Now, if these beams bend, they'll push against these steel plates. And because there's triangle boxes welded to them, they're pretty much impossible to bend. But we're about to find out because it's time to test the air pressure. I really hope this works. We're at 10 PSI. Sorry to make creaking noises. We are literally holding 20 PSI of air in a box made out of junk. I'll see you soon, Moon. Earlier I mentioned these walls can handle high heat, but they can't handle temperatures below negative 40 degrees. To grow and sustain life, we have to fix that. So I cut up some power cords. Oops. Hey Daphne, I need to borrow this. Stripped out the wire and wired up these. Each one of these heating elements can heat up to 338 degrees. They work just like a defroster in your car's windshield. Just way hotter. In case you're wondering, I did have to take it apart again. It's kind of dark in here. John, where are all the power cords? You're sleeping in the moon face. It's time to decorate my new home. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to fit in that anymore, but we need to hurry up and make this thing support life. Because the moon has zero atmosphere like Earth to block radiation. We should probably fix that. And we can with metalized polyethylene. It's an emergency blanket. And because this emergency blanket is made out of this shiny material, it can reflect 90% of heat radiation away from our moon base. And when it's cold, it reflects the heat from our heaters and keeps it in. This is what NASA is going to build during the next recession. It's time to grow some life. But there's a problem. I left the rest of my junk in there. Am I interrupting a ritual? I'm praying for more power cords. All right, well, I got you a gift. It's for you. Power cords. All right, we're good, because I left the rest of my junk in here. Bye. This is the Plant Grower 9000. I don't know why I called it that, it just sounded cool. It's powered by a solar charge controller. I was gonna use this super fancy solar panel I made out of tent poles and wire, but as you can probably see, I'm building this moon base in a tent in my backyard in the middle of the night. So I just decided to hotwire a computer power supply, check the voltage, replace the floppy drive power with a DC jack, plugged it in, and it works. So how did I make this abomination of technology actually grow life? Well, I found this DC jack in this pile of junk, turned it into a power cord, and connected it to this LED. Yes, those are more power cords. But this isn't just any LED light. This LED grows life. 
The LED is cooled down by a computer fan, which is connected with zip ducts. Speaking of growing things, at this current time, I have 678 subscribers. Let's grow that too. Please hit that subscribe button. Now with the seeds planted, the soil watered, the soil temperature monitored by a regulator to run the heaters, and enough air supply, all we can do now is wait. Now we just have to get it out. Earlier we got this moon base to 20 PSI, but now we're gonna find out just how much air this moon base can hold before it opens itself. Bye for now, little plant. This is the air supply for our moon base. It contains over 140 PSI of air. When I turn this knob, it'll send all 140 PSI into our moon base. Well, it was supposed to explode, but it looks like it just blew out all the seals at about 30 PSI. Well, at least we grew some life. I wonder how it tastes. Ah. Not good. I'm gonna go build something else. 